Hello and welcome back everybody to Everlasting Summer. So, it is once again the middle of the night. And actually, I recorded everything I wanted to record today in the evening. And I was actually done, but spoilers for Amayado bus stop. If you want to watch this series, uh, go watch it first or I don't know, go play it yourself, whatever you like. I, uh, I was kind of bummed after the ending of Amayado bus stop. And therefore I thought, man, I can't end that gaming session for today on such a bad note. So I'm gonna play a bit more Everlasting Summer. <laughs> and here we are. So, uh, if I remember correctly, we were going to the beach with Uljana and Alisa. So, let's see what happens. Indeed, Alisa was back in a couple of minutes. Whoops, sorry. Ready? Ready for what? She gave me the trunks. Though you hardly could call them trunks. They looked like pink boxes, decorated with butterflies and flowers. Actually, they were boxes. I am almost afraid to ask, but where did you get these? Too scared to put them on? Well, you know, uh, I have not the slightest intention of doing so. I appreciated her joke, but wasn't going to make myself a laughing stock. Put them on, she said roughly. Why don't you try them on instead of me? I think that color of this swimsuit would set off your eyes very nicely. Let's make a bet. I had no desire to accept her bets. No thanks. All right, either go to the beach wearing them, or you swim naked. Weighing the pros and cons, even the second option seems better than the first. I'm not planning to go anywhere at all. Then I'll tell everyone that you left these trunks in my cabin. Why would I do that? How should I know? She bursts into laughter. I didn't want to argue with Elisa, so I decided to go to the beach in the end. But not in those flamboyant trunks. Okay, I'll be there in ten minutes. Don't be late. She ran off after saying that. Ah, I don't get to decide anything anymore. In the beginning there were so many decisions and now there are like none. That's a bit strange. I dragged my feet to the leader's cabin to get a towel and to hopefully find something like trunks. Olga was waiting for me in the room. Semyon, did you hear anything about Shurik? Oh yeah, right, I forgot about that, totally. Same as half an hour ago. I walked to my bed and took a towel. Are you going somewhere? Yes, to the beach. Wait, do you have swimming trunks? Er, uh, twunks. Wow. I'm developing an English-speaking disorder that doesn't even exist in German. Interesting. You came here without any luggage, as I recall. Strange. That fact didn't seem to surprise her during our first encounter. No. So what will you wear? Good question. What? I, I don't know. Wait a minute. She walked to the wardrobe and unlocked a drawer. In a moment she had a pair of normal black trunks. Where did she get those? More importantly, why? Someone from the previous session might have forgotten them. Or maybe it's the parallel world and everything is convenient, I don't know. Considering all the strange things in this camp, it wasn't really surprising to find men's swimming trunks in August's room. See? Thanks. The trunks were just my size. How convenient, once again. I got changed behind the cabin and went to the beach. A lot of pioneers had already gathered there, but I recognized only Alisa and Ulyana. Come here, or oh, she has even USSR uh, swimming outfit. <laughs> That's funny. I walked over to them and sat on the sand. I see you found something better. She stared at my trunks and smirked. As you can see. Come on, let's swim. I don't want to. Maybe later. I was not a fan of swimming. I actually am. Well, I was. I haven't done it actually in years, if I recall correctly. Really in years? Wow. But I was once a very good swimmer. I don't know if I'm now, because I haven't swam in a while, but I was once really, really good. Suit yourself. The girls ran into the water. Why did I come here? I don't know. I couldn't decide anything. Why am I not looking for answers? Should I care about it now? Sovyonok seemed normal. 
Certainly, a lot of strange things have happened to me during these three and a half days, but none of them take none of them taken separately seemed all at all separate. Who? Wait a minute. All right, I think I may work now, but none of them taken separately seemed at all supernatural, especially since I didn't get any closer to finding so much as a clue. On the contrary, everything that has happened has only confused me more. What alternatives do I have? I won't get any truth from the local residents, though I doubt they even know it. Should I try to leave this place? But how far can I walk, considering that I don't even know where I am? And especially, if I was in a parallel universe, I might expect to fall off a cliff into the abyss or something. I don't know if that is the best idea. It turns out that my only option is to wait, for now at least. Ah, the, I'm, I'm the same. I have the same opinion as Sam Yokia. After some time, the girls came back. Ulyana held something in her hands. Of course she does. Look! I looked up and saw a crayfish. Just a normal crayfish. Of course. Ulyana lay next to me and started to torment it. Leave the poor animal alone. Why? It's just a crayfish. So what? It has a right to live too. I rip its claws off and ask the cook to boil it for the dinner. As if we have nothing else to eat. I looked at Lisa. She seemed to be totally uninterested in Ulyana's fun with the poor sea creature. Tell her. What's wrong? It's a crayfish. It deserves it. What the fuck? <laughs> it looked like the girls missed the lesson on nature in primary school and lacked empathy for the environment. Probably. Give it. I snatched the crayfish off Ulyana. Suit yourself. I was a little surprised she didn't resist. I looked into the eyes of the poor animal. They didn't express anything at all, but I thought that it would, if it could speak, it would certainly be outraged. Maybe it would even go to the UN Convention of Human Rights. Maybe. To tell the truth, I wasn't sure that would help. Probably not. You're a genius, Samyon. That was a lame joke, really. <laughs> I took the crayfish to the river and set it free. Never mind, I catch more. There are plenty of them here, said Ulyana. No doubt about it, I mumbled. Can't stop a maniac at his work. Time passed and I was getting sleepy. I fell asleep. Probably you will be attacked by more crayfish now. That, I don't think that was a wise decision. I don't remember what I was dreaming about, if I was dreaming at all. But I woke up when someone shook my shoulder. Olga stood next to me. I mean, I... Like, for 99%, I would bet 99% against one that the, the, the swimsuits and stuff they are wearing and bikinis and I don't know weren't a thing in the Soviet Union. Well, has her bikini a neck over... Like, for real? Ha, huh, I've never seen that before. That looks actually cool. I have to say that, but the rest looks just naughty. Did you come to swim too? I asked, still half asleep. No, it's almost time for lunch and we still can't find Shurik. That is the reason why you're not wearing normal stuff? Because you didn't want to swim? Okay. I'll take it. The leader sat, standing before me in a wet swimsuit. And I want you to look for him. It seems like I'm the only peony in this entire camp. I was sincerely outraged. Every time it was getting clearer that Olga considered me her errand boy to be used like a slave. Or vice versa. If I came to you, then I want you to help me. Why exactly me? I mean, it's your parallel universe, probably. So you have to do stuff. However, after giving it some thought, I decided to agree. After all, it's my sh after all my shoulders and back got sunburned while I was sleeping and searching for Shurik would, met, would let me get acquainted with unexplored location of the camp. True. Okay. It wasn't exactly right to wander around wearing only swimming trunks, so I should get changed first. Ten minutes later I stood outside Olga's cabin, deciding where to go. Oh, I don't have that many options. Well, oh, up there. I see. Well, I uh, quickly saved, just in case it is important where I go first and last and stuff. So, 
let's first go to house number 17. I think I haven't met these people yet. I don't recognize them from afar, at least. Wait a minute. Mouse out of the picture. Wonderful. But it's still a stupid idea. If Shurik was hiding anywhere in the camp, he would have been found by now. Of course, assuming he wants to be found. So I hardly think I can help them. Oh, this was his own, uh, his own cabin. Wait, so, uh, if I j Oh, wait a minute, but I didn't want to do that. Ah, uh, but Slavia's here, but I didn't want to do that. That is, that is not right, no. Ugh, damn it. I would have loved to talk to Slavia. But it's just not, it's not what I wanted to do, actually. So, let's go to the boathouse. Ugh, damn it. Maybe Shurik decided to pick up stones near the water. Damn it, I wanted to talk to Slavia. But it's not, it's not morally, it's not right. No, nope. you know, it's not morally wrong. <laughs> of course it's not, it's, that, that is bullshit. No, but, you know, it destroys the gaming experience. What I love about simulators like these is like you do your own decisions. Depending on what you do, stuff changes. And I wouldn't have gone to my own cabin to just lay down. That's not what I would have done. Therefore, it kind of destroys the experience for me. And for you people, it destroys, you know, the experience of watching me playing it. Well, if you're interested in watching me play it, maybe you're just watching it because you want to see somebody play you, you know maybe it doesn't destroy the experience for you that may be true but it's destroying it for me and i also want to have fun In the worst case i'll find his corpse but i'm sure that won't end up that way i was crossing the square when somebody called out to me ah damn it i got from slavia to alisa <laughs> wait Alisa came up and smiled. I immediately sensed the trap. Where are you going? I am searching for Shurik. Olga asked me to. <coughs> Excuse me. And how is it? Exciting. She looked intently into my eyes and I turned away awkwardly. Not really. But you know, a peony is missing. Surely you're not freaking out over such a minor thing. What do you mean? Only a few hours have passed. Maybe you just lost track of time while having a walk. Certainly, I would have... I had... I would had the same idea. Or I had had. Wait, that works, right? Yeah, that works in English. I had had the same idea, but it wasn't telling her that. Yeah, that's true. But who knows what could have happened. Let me help you with it. Um, with what? I got suspicious. With looking for Shurik. Oh, but I can do it. Oh, come on. She smiled at me, but there was something mal ma malevolent in that smile. Something evil, I suppose. Naturally, her smile was cute enough, but it really seemed to me like there was something behind it. Well, if you insist. Since I could not understand what's on her mind, I had no real reason to refuse. Damn it, I swapped that for Slavia. Oh, you cruel world. Why do you do this to me? I'll bite me in the ass if I get, like, an Alisa ending or something. I really, I, I will bite in my own ass. I don't know how I'm going to pull that off, but I'll do it. But before we go, I have to get one thing from home. From home. Okay, I'll wait for you. You're actually serious about just standing there? Let's go. Okay. We approach Alisa's cabin. It would be just like all other cabins, if not for the Jolly Roger on the door. That's not a Jolly Roger, is it? It looks more like a crow. Ah, on the door. I'm stupid. Not over the door. On the door. Now I see it. <laughs> By the way, Oyana's my roommate. Okay. We entered the cabin. The complete chaos inside really reminded me of my old flat. Hmm. So, who's who? I suppose on the left is uh, Alisa and on the right is Oyana. So, Oyana likes hockey... A cartoon cat, whoever that is. And a dancing Stalin? I don't know. It's probably not Stalin, but who knows. 
though why I thought of it as old. In general, I would imagine a girl's room differently. Snow white sheets, walls, floor and ceiling shining. Spotless. You're not, you're not a little bit sexist, aren't you? But when it you, but when it you consider that... But I, okay, just scratch the it, I suppose. But when you consider that the two most exemplary pioneers are living here, we just stood silently for some time. And what did you need to get? Huh? Seems like I interrupted Elisa's thinking. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not here, actually. Wait here, I'll be back in a minute. I sense evil. She smiled and ran out. She seems really flaky today. I began to examine the room. I wouldn't say that there had been an explosion. It was just a decent mess. Well, at least by looking at all this mess created in one pioneer session, I can surely say that I am not the messiest person in the world. Well, I mean, I have seen messier stuff, to be honest. Even messier stuff by myself. <laughs> The decoration of my apartment took years to be completed. I wasn't thinking about anything in particular, was just looking around the room. Posters of Soviet artists, some books on the shelves, various hold, household items. And then I realized that everything is wrong. Something will happen soon. Something bad. Why did Elisa leave me here alone? There was something I had to discover. My god told me that it's dangerous to stay here. I went to the door and tried to open it. Locked. What a surprise! How did she manage to quietly lock me in? I don't know what's on her mind, but I need to get out of here. I went to the window, opened it and climbed out. Now I can go t and take care of business or... I chose the second option and waited. What is the reason she had me locked up? I wanted to know what was happening, plus I really wanted to see Elisa's face when she finds her room empty. I hate you, Semyon. I really hate you. Never in my life would I have done that. I hid in the bushes next to the house and waited. After some time, I heard footsteps. Alisa and Olga came to the house. You'll see everything for yourself. She opened the door and went in. A few seconds later, she ran back out. You know, I... Alisa's face looked as if she'd just won the mouse-catching competition, but at the last moment found out that it's not a real Olympic sport. So he just disappeared. Olga asked skeptically. Oh, cool. Olga has a nice hat. I have to say, I like the hat. I did the right thing by closing the window after myself. Oh, no. You know, I understand everything. Alisa's complicated father's name. You and your roommate. Every time the same thing. Haven't you had enough yet? B but it's true. Really? One story after another. Semyon in your cabin. Semyon harassing you. Why do you keep lying? That's horrible. Alisa seemed really upset and, to my surprise, what must, was not trying to argue. On the one hand, it was funny to look at, but on the other, I felt a bit sorry for Alisa. Yeah, she told people you were harassing her. I would feel totally sorry. So sorry, I feel so sorry. I feel from the toe to my little, little hair that is standing up of my head because I'm so angry right now that I'm so sorry I don't even know what I'm talking anymore. Why is he sorry for her? Why? She deserves it, though. She, she deserves much more. She deserves a clap on the, onto the back of her hat. Our leader finally finished scolding her and left. Alisa was mad. She clenched her fists and trembled. Her face was flushed. It seemed to me that she was going to explode. I sat in the bushes and laughed quietly. However, I was wondering what was on her mind, and I came out of my hiding place, not afraid of being beaten. So, what exactly did you want to show the leader? Me? Elisa turned and looked at me with disbelief. After a moment, surprise turned to anger. You! You! What about me? She calmed down a bit. Because you're a loser. And why is that? Because you're afraid to compete with me. When? When we played cards. What a serious reason. Yeah, maybe I should apologize to you. I asked sarcastically. Screw you. She went into the house, slamming the door. I wasn't angry at Elisa. In the end, I would have expected her to do something like this. Anyway, I got through it without consequences. I was very lucky. 
The confusion and embarrassment just made my day. Chuckling, I left Elise's cabin, which was about to become my death trap. Okay, so that was that. Let's save the game here. I wonder what would have happened if I, um, if I would have bet with her. Maybe Olga would have got me in the... I don't know. Interesting question. So, do I go to my room or to the bus stop? What would I do if I didn't know that Slavia was at my room? I would probably go to the bus stop. Uh, I'm probably going to find Shurik. Nah. Maybe, I don't know. Let's just go and see. The bus stop seemed to be a fine choice. A strange thought came across me. Perhaps Shurik is in the same situation as me. Ah, I didn't think about that, but that is true. And so he decided to run away from this camp. Maybe by the 410 bus. It could really turn out to be true, if he came here by accident too. Although the chances of that are quite slim. But you never know. What if the bus would really come? However, I could hardly believe in that. Indeed, I spent a couple of minutes waiting at the bus stop, made sure that there were no signs of Shurik or anyone else here, and headed back to the camp. Somebody rushed out from behind the gates and bumped into me. The impact wasn't strong, so I just staggered. Oh, it's you! Miko stood in front of me and dropped her bruised forehead. Oh, sorry. It's alright, it's my fault. I was going to go to the music club, but got lost in thought about a new song. You know, thinking about lyrics and music, I hadn't realized how I got here. So you don't have to apologize. A words per minute rate obviously exceeded the recognition limits of my brain. I made an attempt to re read promptly. Uh, sure, sure. Gotta go, <laughs> you know. Oh, wait. I wanted to leave as usual without having to listen to her, but Miku grabbed my hand. A grasp gave me the creeps as I got clear vision of an agonizing ex execution by another rap session. Can you help me a little, please? Just a teensy weensy bit? That definitely wasn't on my to-do list today. Well, I'd be glad to, but it's pretty please. Miko looked at me with such puppy dog eyes that my heart started to melt. She totally wasn't going to let go of my hand. And what help exactly do you need? You'll accompany me. I can't manage to comp compose on my own. I can sing or play. I can't do both at the same time. Even our, our virtuoso has her weaknesses. Well, you know, I can't really play any instrument. Never mind that. I'll show you everything. Come on, let's go. Hmm. First of all, once again, I save. Buck. Now, what do I do? I have nothing against her. To be honest, I don't have too much going for her. Ah. 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 No. No. I... Uh, no, no, I don't go with Miku. I mean, I really have nothing against her. I, 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 um, I like energetic people. My personally, I myself, you may not have recognized it by now, <laughs> but I'm not the most quirky, energetic person in the world. Maybe the most angry person in the world from time to time when I see bullshit, but not the most energetic one. Uh, and I really, I. Um, action, actually, I'm the kind of person who helps everyone when asked. That's the problem. That's that's a bad habit. That's a bad habit. If someone asks me, can you help me? I usually do it. <laughs> really bad habit. Uh, but music, really? And I need to help a composing and stuff? No. 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 I don't want to compose music right now. So... You know, I should be searching for Shurik and all that stuff. Miko looked at me with frustration. Just for a little bit. I was lost for words. She dragged me along with her. Probably nothing co good will come out of this, but the only way to get her off me is to wrestle my hand out of hers. But that wouldn't be very nice. Nothing bad will happen after all. Probably. 
So, it doesn't matter what I do, what I decide to do. Uh, maybe, maybe I have points for the girls and I have now some minus points with Miku. I don't know, maybe, probably. Within a minute, we were already standing in the music club. Miku took a guitar. Here, have a look. She sat down and started playing. I tried to follow her hands. The tune seemed quite simple. It seemed quite easy to repeat it. Got it? Kind of. Let's try. I took the guitar and started playing. Doesn't sound that bad. That didn't really work, huh? Let me show you one more time. She played much better than me. Looking at Miku, I wondered. Of course, she was a chatterbox. She was naive and clumsy. However, she was t extremely talented in music. Try again. I managed much better the second time. Well, that's much better. She smiled. It wasn't hard, in fact. Just repeat the same notes over and over. Just don't lose track. Start on my command. Okay. Ready? Go. It was a song in Japanese. Frankly speaking, I didn't understand a single word. But Miku's singing was quite good. In fact, it was outstanding. Maybe because she's a vocaloid. How are they not so sued by the vocaloid people? <laughs> How are they not so sued? She put her heart in every note, every word. Yeah, music probably is the very thing for her to dedicate her life to. It seemed like it wasn't her who chose the music, but the music that has chosen her. The last half an hour president presented in Miku in a completely different light. Oh, thank you. Did you like it? I finally managed it with you. On my own, it's not no good. I either mess up with the words or miss the strings, and it's perfect with you. So, thank you so much. You really have a talent, you know. Just to play like that without any preparation. Nope. It seems I changed my opinion about her too hastily. <laughs> Thanks for the song. Gotta go. Gotta go. See you. Thanks for... The rest of her words were left behind the door. Maybe that would have been different if I would have gone with her voluntarily. I leaned on the wall of the club cabin and sighed. Miko's song was still playing in my mind. I went for lunch with mixed feelings, with the sense of accomplishment and with the realization of time wasted. Shit, I can't go back to my cabin and talk to Slavia. <laughs> why? I mean, and especially, why is like... Mm, why is my cabin the the point to talk to Slavia. Why isn't it the beach or the, the gym or something that makes sense? The canteen was crowded. I couldn't stay unnoticed. Olga called me. Simeon, come with us. Oh, well, at least now I can talk to Slavia. The camp leader, Slavia and Electronic were sitting at the four seat table. I nodded and went to get my food. This time I had to spend several minutes in the qui... quay? Well, in a line or something like that. Today's menu didn't really differ from the other day's menu. The dishes looked at the same at looked the same at least. When I sat at the table and wished bon appetit to everyone, Olga said, So, what are you thinking? About what? We searched for Shurik all around. It's noon and he's nowhere to be found. I took a note of the rhyme, but didn't want to point it out. We looked all over the camp. I went all around the neighboring forest. Olga looked at me, and I hope to. <laughs> we must call the police. <laughs> oh, sorry. Maybe we should wait. Uh, uh, if you didn't realize, I was laughing about the hope too. Maybe we should wait until the evening. I asked lazily. Maybe he went home. That can't be. Shurik lives thousands of miles away. By train? The nearest station, she paused, is far off. Ah, nearly got you, bitch, nearly got you. Now it was getting interesting. Every time the conversation reached the point concerning ways, I could leave Sovyonok, all the camp... I could leave Sovyonok, all the camp inhabitants started changing the subject. Wait, I want to read that sentence again. Every time the conversation reached the point concerning ways I could leave, so you know. Okay, the sentence made sense. I'm just stupid. <laughs> How far is far? 
really far. The camp leader looked at me, indicating with her expression that asking more questions was not advised. So, we should go deeper into the forest. Maybe I got lost. Shirig always takes a compass, chimped in electronic. I wonder what else could be found in his magic vest, assuming he has one. If I were to get lost in the forest, a compass would be of no real use. Police. We should call the police in the evening. Not right now, at least. Okay, so you'll do it later. They were all silent. We should be able to find him before evening. We still have time. If he actually got lost, we have no time to lose. We cannot be sure. Then where is he? Where? There was some truth to the camp leader's words. Hiding the whole day just like that is suspicious. Why would he do that? Shrik seemed to be seemed to me seemed to me to be quite a serious pioneer. Oyana would have been a better fit for this behavior. So there's a good reason to believe that he was gone. All that can be done as all that everything that can be done has already been done. We'll just have to wait. Slavia, Electronic, and Olga looked at me sorrowfully, but didn't say a word. I finished my lunch, took the tray back, and left the canteen. It's still the first half of the day. What now? The camp was drifting off for an afternoon nap. Only Gander stared at me through his glasses. Of course he was starting somewhere else, eh, uh, staring somewhere else, but I had a feeling that he was constantly watching me. Big Brother's watching you, huh? I bet he knows where Shurik is hiding. He just can't say anything. The disappearance of the cybernetics club's leader made me think. Maybe it's got something to do with my case. Oh, Pionia. The nurse stood in front of me. I looked at her curiously. Go and take my place in the infirmary. I have an urgent call. Somebody's injured. Me? Yes, you. Take the keys. The nurse threw me the keys and ran away. Why me? Isn't there anyone else in this camp? What exactly should I be doing? What if something happens? What do I do now? I missed my chance to refuse. I stood in front of the door uncertainly. On the one hand, there is nothing to worry about. I'll spend half an hour or so here and she'll be back. But what if, it, if someone comes for actual help? With a broken leg or a head injury? I began to worry too much. I hope that there are no injuries more serious than bruises and scratches in this camp. But at the same time... I could not shake the idea that in a serious situation it would be absolutely useless. True, but that is the nurse's fault, not yours, my boy. I don't even know how to perform, perform CPR. I know. I learned that thanks to driving school. Not the boat school of Spongebob, though. Hopefully. <laughs> a magazine on the nerd's table caught my attention. A good way to relax, I guess. This is labeled Soviet fashion. The publication date or month were absent, of course. However, this was not a surprise. There were much stranger things happening here. I didn't know much about Soviet magazines. Maybe they actually didn't have publication dates on them. I don't know. But it still seems strange. Models dressed in old-fashioned clothes stared at me from glossy pages. Nowadays nobody would wear such clothes, I smirked. Well, at least in your camp everyone wears modern-fashioned bikinis. I wonder if Slavia, for example, considered this fashionable. I can only imagine what would happen if she appeared in my time wearing something like this. Imagine we are walking hand in hand. We are walking in hand in hand. I am wearing my coat with a hood and she is dressed in a lavish dress covered with lace and things. She still looks better than you, you douchebag. Don't be a dick, man. Seems like I am already imagining Slavia in my world. With me. And not only Slavia. This dress better suits Oyan. Hey. Hey, my friend. Keep your dick in your pants, if you know what I want to say to you. This dress better suits Oyana. Hmm. I told you, no lolly shit. This good saffron would look good on Alisa. Hmm. I told you, no tsundere shit. The skirt and cardigan would look nice on Lena. I'm okay with Lena. If only they could be real. No, I, I saw them, heard them, could even touch them. But still they are here and I... I simply don't belong in this place. It's alien to me. I'm just waiting for a chance to get out of here. 
waiting because nothing is up to me anymore. I sighed, put my head on the table and fell asleep. Man, you sleep a lot, don't you? I was awoken by the noise of the door opening. Lena stood at the door. The, the nurse isn't here? Then I'll come back later. I'm substituting for her. Since I'm responsible for pioneers' lives, I should do it with full responsibility. Although, in fact, I was just afraid of something bad happening because of me. Any health complaints? I tried to give Lena the most professional smile I could in order not to confuse her. Nothing special. Just a little headache. Let's do this. Some painkillers, maybe. Of course, I wasn't aware where to find required medicines, so it took me a while to find them. Finally. I handed a metamizole tablet to Lena. Thanks. I hope you didn't give her, like, way too strong stuff, or I don't know, something that will make her brain explode. She smiled. That was completely unexpected, and I lost touch with reality, staring at her. What? Lena turned awkward in an instant. Uh, listen, I've been wondering. Do you like this? I don't know what got into me, but I grabbed that magazine from the table and showed her that picture of a skirt and a cardigan, which would really suit Lena, in my opinion. <laughs> Sorry. I just have to... I don't know if you people uh, know much about the Bridge series, but I just had to think of um, Code Man, a parody of Code Geass, where Lelouch is trying to seduce a, a, a woman on the phone. Uh, on the phone, And he, he asks, what are you wearing? And she says, a cardigan. <laughs> and he answers, get off my phone. <laughs> and every, th every time I now see a cardigan or the word cardigan, I burst out in laughter. <laughs> it, it can't be helped, really. It can't be helped. Maybe I went completely nuts thinking about all the girls being in my world. Or maybe I wanted to distract myself instead of just waiting for the nurse to come back. Lena looked at the picture. Y yes, I guess. Is stuff like this in fashion? I guess. She got confused and started blushing. Why do you ask? Really? Why? Huh. First of all, we do the save. I think you'd look gorgeous in it. Just asking. <sighs> like for real, I need time to think ob about this. And therefore I will do the meanest cliffhanger of all time. So, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.